recording. So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 63. And today is, um, oh, it's the 21st. <laughs> it's the 21st of uh, September. My, my um, background that says that it is the 14th. That's because last week I tried to, to do this and the, the podcast but last week there was a um compute there was an internet glitch and ended up my whole neighborhood has their internet down for whatever reason i was not able to do the workshop this this same workshop last week so here we are second time lucky <laughs> so um we're going to talk about what game are we playing and um and let's see the the main topic of discussion today and uh as usual i want to before we dive in is to just do a brief meditation with everybody so that we can all just um let go of whatever chatter that is in our mind um, during the day so that we can be more present so Let's just start in doing that. So let's just take a deep breath in. So breathe in through your nose very deeply. And then breathe out through your nose as well. Just let go of your breath. And as you let go of your breath, also relax your body as much as you can. And breathe in again through your nose. Breathe in as deeply as you possibly can. And then breathe out deeply. Let's take one more deep breath in. And let it all go. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is comfortable for you to do so. And just use your breath to guide your body to come into relaxation. So relax your body wherever it is that you feel any tension in your body, just hold the intention that you want to relax that part of your body. Use your breath to guide your body into relaxation. When you are more relaxed in your body, then set the intention to also relax your mind. Do the best you can to slow down thoughts. if that is possible. And if it's not possible, if thoughts just keep coming in, then that's okay. Don't try to fight it, just let it be. And the best thing to do is don't engage your thoughts. Meaning, let's say if a thought come in to say, oh, I have to, I should uh, give so-and-so a call then just say no thank you not right now and just let that thought go out don't engage with your thoughts to the best of your ability just observe your thoughts don't engage don't resist just let them come in as easily as they go out
And hopefully after a few more deep breaths, your thoughts will be at least calmer, if not totally pausing, stopping. And when you feel your mind being more calm, then just set the next intention. The next intention is you want to call back all of your attention to yourself, to your body, right here, right now, in your body. Just pay attention to what's in your body. What's within you. Pay attention to that. Pay attention does not mean you have to be concerned or think about anything. Just observe your body. Let go of whatever it is that's outside of you. Just observe what's going on in your body. And no need to engage. Just bring all of your attention back to yourself, to your body. And just focus on your breath. As you breathe in, just imagine that you are bringing back more of yourself. Your attention, your energy, your intention, all of that. Bring back all of those to yourself. Just be with your body in this moment. Right here, right now. Just be with yourself. And after a few more breaths of doing this sincerely, just notice how you have shifted. Everyone would have a um, different experience of what focusing in yourself in this moment would feel for you. For myself, what I feel is I feel more weight. I feel as though there were more of a substantial feeling in my body, especially the, the, the central part of my body. I just feel that there is something there. There's more substance. That's what I mean by weight. And you may feel this or you may feel something else. Whatever it is that you feel is perfectly all right for you. So just notice what that feels like when you're able to be in the moment with yourself. And when you notice that, then just take a deep breath in and come all the way back into the room. And open your eyes if you have closed your eyes before. And welcome back, everybody. Come back. So um, I'm going to talk about what game we are playing. But before I do that, I just want to give a bit more of an explanation. What do I mean by you know, what game are we playing? And um, I remember last week, um, maybe Thursday or Friday, I, I sent out an email with a, a few video recommendations. Um, and those videos would have given you more of a background of the nature of reality. However, right now, I'm just going to talk about, um, just sum it up in very briefly. 
so <clears throat> so just to to sum it up is that you know there there are three um, theoretical physicists. Um, one is called John Clauser, Anton Selinger, and um, Elaine Aspect. So their names are not important, but the um, but that um, the what's important is that there there were three theoretical physicists that were given the um, recently given a joint um, Nobel Prize in physics for an experiment that they started. Um, or they, they they conducted in 1972. And since that experiment, they have actually progressively um, added on to make their experiment even more airtight, meaning less room for for error to make. So every time they notice that there is any any possibility that maybe um, something that they have not considered, May have skewed the results. They would just um, just correct those and make uh, and then do the experiment, the, the pretty much um, very similar experiment over and over again, and continually making them be the the be the parameters of the experiments tighter and tighter. And so, and this was and. The, the Nobel Prize was given in 2022, which is just last year. So it's very recently they have, they were, all three of them were recognized um, for their experiments that actually they, they kind of proved that uh, local realism view of the, the universe, which is a a particular view of the un universe, um, that local realism view of the universe is most likely to be false. Now that's a very technical um, description of their experiments. So let me just put in more layman terms. What is, so let's explain what is real. So their definition of real is that if something exists, independent of you, then, then it is it is real. Meaning that, let's say, if you guys don't look at me and you're not on, um, if, if you were not on this um, podcast with me, then I don't exist. Then that means, you know, when you're not looking, I don't, I'm not real. Because when you're not engaged with me, I don't exist, then I'm not real because my existence depends on you observing me, joining me. However, that's actually what they, um, the, the experiment proved is that when is that real, local realism is false. He is saying that in reality does not exists independent of us. So it is only when we observe something that it exists. So that is what their experiment actually proved. And so why is it that they don't, they didn't say that it is absolutely false. They said that it is likely to be false. Why? Because they've only been using um, really small subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are so small that um, without the, the use of the equipment, we won't be able to see them. So that's what they experimented on, um, is to use really small particles. And they do experiment with them. And they proved in this very small, when we can't even see without um, special equipment, in that universe that when we don't observe something, those particles actually don't exist. So that's why they they say that it is most likely that you know local realism is false. They have not actually um, proved that you know on a, a larger scale, let's say a person as large as a person or even a cup of tea 
that if I if I'm not holding this cup of tea, that it actually exists. If I leave the room, I don't see the this cup of tea. Does it actually still exist? They have not done that at a large scale. However, um, logically, every big thing, like I am actually made up of billions, trillions of subatomic particles. And so if you if you break down this whole body, it only subatomic uh, particles exist. And at that level, um, there is no independent real there's, there's no nothing that is real independent of um, us. So that actually tells us that reality as we know it is actually not real at all. And the the only other, I would say, only other um, way of understanding this is that reality, what we think of as reality is actually um, as if in a game. Um, if you've ever played a video game, you would notice that only the, um, let's say if you play a game of the, I think the the, the example they, they gave, they, they gave um, is Grand Theft Auto. So it could be any game, it could be any video game, but Grand Theft Auto is because you're driving in this, you know, you're, you're stealing a car and you're driving. So what you can see within the game um, is only where your car is. Once the car moved to a different location, whatever it is that you have drove past is no longer there. So that really is what reality is. Our, our reality as well. But... I know you guys have lots of, of but, but, but that's not true. Because <laughs> I re actually exist. Even when you guys are not here in the podcast with me, I, I actually, like, like this person called Winnie actually exists even when no one is around me. So how do you explain that? It's really consciousness. Consciousness observing. So we each have a consciousness. We each have a consciousness and our consciousness is observing and creating and um, making up reality as we go along. So even though when your consciousness is not observing me, but my consciousness is definitely still observing me. And because whatever consciousness wants to see, wants to look, then the consciousness, my consciousness, would create that reality. So the the so that is why you know even when you guys are not around, I am still here because um, my consciousness is still observing me, and your consciousness is observing you. However, if you think of, let's say, you know, somebody that is in Japan. Or you can think of it as, um, you know, all the, all those um, cherry blossom trees in Japan. When nobody is observing them, are they still there? Um, the answer is, unless there is somebody, there's a consciousness in Japan that is observing that those trees, then they're not there. It's only consciousness observation that create that um, reality. So that is what our reality actually is. And that's why I've talked to you guys before that, you know, this is, this is a game. I'm, and, and I know um, when I first heard of this, because this, 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 it's not something that was recently discovered, even though the Nobel Prize was awarded last year. But this, that, um, that you know, local realism is false, is something that has been known for a long time. 
you know, as far back as 1972 when they first um, conducted that experiment. But there's a lot of um, mystic sage already realize that that is the case because they have really dealt deep into um, observing consciousness and they realize and those mystics already realize that the reality is not real because if you um i don't know if you any of you are um <clears throat> familiar with the the heart sutra which is a buddhism um text the heart sutra the the like it's heart sutras is saying that everything is empty. So that's actually what it is referring to, is that reality is actually not what we think it is. Reality is not what we think it is. So um, that is why I want to talk about, you know, what game are you playing? Because we are consciousness observing our own reality. Our life exists because we observe it into reality. We observe it. We create our life. We literally create our life through our consciousness observing. And how do we actually collapse reality? Meaning, how do we actually make something real? Is that we observe it. We observe it just by observing it. Because it is never as simple as just observing something. Consciousness always has um, background. It always has stories behind it. So my story is I'm Chinese, I was born a certain year at a certain location, I have a certain upbringing. So all of that is conditioning my consciousness, conditioning how I um, create the reality when I observe it. When I create my life, I create it not from emptiness, not so far anyways, but I've been creating my reality with all of those games, programs, whatever name you want to call it. That's when I observe reality, when I observe, when consciousness observe reality with all of these programs and games that I signed up for before I even um, come onto this, this planet, before I was ever conceived and, and was born, I have signed up for um, certain things, certain experiences. So when I come here, I have all of those background stories that allowed me to collapse and create reality the way that it has happened for me. So, and in order for us to get to the point where we we actually are coming to the point where the whole um, paradigm of collapsing reality is, is changing, is shifting now. So um, one of the ways that it to, would be good to, would be useful for us is to actually understand how we create our reality. Because if we understand um, the way we create reality, then we can actually start to shift that if we wish to. So I just want to stop here for a bit and just ask for feedback, comments. So far, so far, so good. Or have I lost you guys already? My, my question is that, like, if we already put everything up there, when we say, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 experience this, 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 when we come on this earth, do we change some? Or that's how we're supposed to go through that, uh, the game? Very good question. Yes. Um, 
we we can when we we can actually change anything and everything we can however there are certain rules of engagement because um i've mentioned that this is a game so but even games has rules like if you've played any game at all you know that there are always rules when you play a game like when you play blackjack there is a, a set of rules you can't just have any number of, of cards there is a certain number of cards that you can have and there's so like you know what i mean every game has a set of rules when you understand what is the underlying set of rules, then you can change and rig the games according to um, how you want to change it. So if, suppose, if I I pick one scenario, okay, I born to this, my, my family, my family will arrange my marriage and then I have a kid and then I go through this, this, this. I was fully unaware or aware, doesn't matter, like how my soul was or my circumstances were. Mm -hmm. So is it that was supposed to be because I agree before I came on this earth or I have changed a little, little, little and then I got lost in this game or I got killed uh, two, three times and then came back again? Mm -hmm. um well yes um when you become conscious that this is a game mm -hmm. when you become conscious of that and you and when you start to find out what is the the rules of engagement meaning the rules of the game when you start to become aware of what is the rules what are the the rules of engagement then you can start to change it. Um, but while you are playing the game, while you're fully Im immersed in that game, you don't remember who, who you are. You, you don't remember that you signed up for it. And actually there are um, many ways that, um, that has assisted us to be able to play this game because we, um, <clears throat> We're here to play games, so but we are actually like us. Our consciousness is actually uh, creator consciousness, meaning that we are limitless. That's our nature. Our nature is limitless. But when we come onto this planet and we want to play, we have agreed to certain limitations. Everybody would have limitations. Um, so, for example, our senses, our five senses. We, we don't see everything that can be seen because our, um, our vision is actually only, um, is, is kept to maybe about, I forgot what, what it was, the, on the spectrum of things that can be seen, we actually can only see maybe about, you know, not more than 10% of that, maybe even less than 10%. We're only able to see a very small spectrum of things that are visible and hearing as well. We don't hear everything that can be heard. Um, just very, very um, simply, what a dog can hear, we cannot hear because they their range of hearing is much louder, much uh, much more um, wider than <coughs> ours. We can only hear a very small range of um, decibels. Anything beyond that is beyond our hearing. We don't hear um, things that a some a lot of other animals can hear. So our senses, all of our senses are um, like eyes, what we can hear, what we can smell, what we can feel. It's very limited. So our senses are limited. So that's one of the ways that we limit ourselves. And also when we, when we come on this planet, we have, we have something called fail of forgetfulness. We forgot who we are. We forgot that we are actually eternal limitless beings we totally forgot that we we are disconnected from that so that we can fully Im immerse in this game 
and um, what else? Plus, there's a lot of different things that um, that assist in us, us. Is for example, um, there are a lot of programming, like education, programming, religion, programming, all program and uh, limit us into how we should think. The so so our culture each. So Chinese culture is only like a certain way of being. That's actually programming to limit us to only behave within certain parameters. And if you go beyond that, then, you know, you, you look at as being rude or unruly or whatever um, labels and names that we want to give to people that don't act according to what is acceptable norms. So those are different layers, layers and layers upon layers of limitation so that we can actually play this game. So when when we were up there, that's how we like suppose when I was coming here, say I will do this. That's why I'm, I'm going to be born in India in a certain family and I will play that game. But I don't finish that what I promised up there and I don't remember what I supposed to play. And when I go back fully unaware, do I have to come back and do the same game again to complete that uh, my task? It used to be, yes. Because um, sometimes if you, your soul, your soul don't choose to experience things, just that there is usually a reason behind why you want to choose this, why you want to choose certain experience. There is usually a reason. So we don't just pick experiences randomly. Our soul actually pick experience so that we can um, enrich our consciousness so that we can um, get beyond that get beyond and grow our consciousness. So I'll so pick those things. That's why there are some things that you know, if we, for whatever reason, we didn't get, for example, um, <clears throat> I was just trying to think of an example. Okay, so for, um, for example, hmm. If we are here to experience, let's say, um, how to be, you know, so um, small and limited in, in our senses. For example, my consciousness wants to experience um, being able to, to feel more, to hear more. So that was my experience. And so, so um, my senses, actually, I can actually hear things that other people can't hear. I can smell things that other people don't smell. I can, um, like, like Sifu James can see energy that other people don't see. So <coughs> this, let's say that's what I signed up for. That's what I signed up for is to be able to see like what um, how Sifu James can can see. And so so far I haven't been able to do that. But so and and one of the reasons why I couldn't is because somehow in the back of my mind, in, in a very unconscious way, I believe that if I can see those things, then I'm going to be scared because I can I can see what really is and this reality is going to be so scary that I won't be able to handle it that's why you know unconsciously I don't allow myself to see these things the things that uh, Sifu James can see so that can be something that um, my unconscious mind can create and I don't know if I don't have a, a good um, communication with my, my own unconscious mind I wouldn't know that that's part of the, the um, reasoning behind that. And, <laughs> and so if I didn't get to to see um, the way that Sifu James can see, and let's say I die later tonight. And and so I, this is something that is an 
unfinished experience, then when I come again, if it is important for my soul to have that experience, then yes, I would take on that that again. I will have when next time I come around, I would have to um, put myself in a setting where I it's much it's going to support me to be able to achieve that experience of being able to see energy as easily as I am able to see any one of you or any any um, real material physical objects. So that is it is absolutely feasible that that may happen if we if we didn't complete something then you know next time around we we will come and do it again that's feasible however i also want to mention that um playground is changing um <clears throat> in case you have not heard we are uh, stepping into a very different playground and then some some people have called that this playground that we are moving into is called the fifth dimension, meaning that we we actually get to reconnect with a lot more of our um, limitless self. And the way we process information is going to be very different from before. It used to be that, you know, if we want to learn something, we actually have to read a book or um, uh, go <coughs> apprentice with somebody and actually learn that. So that's one of the way that we uh, we used to, um, in the old paradigm, that's how we learn something, is we we have to actually go, um, read a book or have a, or follow somebody who is doing what it is that we, we wanted to learn. But in the new paradigm, we don't have to do that anymore. We have the capacity to download the information that we need, we need in the moment that we need it. So um, that's so that's why we are moving into the new paradigm. However, not everybody is um, ready to move into the new paradigm. Some people wanted to keep experiencing the old paradigm. So those people would be moving off to uh, another reality that will allow them to keep doing that. So did I answer your question yet? Yes, because when last week I saw your uh, the headline saying what game we are playing, and then I thought about my life and say, okay, did this, this, this happen, this happen, good and bad, everything. Then I said, what the hell I was thinking to go through all these experiences? I didn't need it. <laughs> I could live a better life. <laughs> what I got out of it, because then I analyzed, I analyzed, then I said, what did I learn from these? Except going through the pain, going through the betrayed, disconnecting with people, taking care of people and leaving myself behind. What did I learn from here? I pick like a good, like a 30, 40 things negative, maybe four positive. That's <laughs> what I did in my mind. I said, okay, what did I, what I really did? Okay. <laughs> so why did I sign up for this? <laughs> Okay, wow, wonderful, Nishi. You are you are an A student. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You actually, you actually went through all of that. He, yeah, even though I didn't, I I was not even able to put the the podcast on, but you did the homework already. So, <laughs> and I talked to my sister uh, even yesterday, and then she started uh, discussing. She. You know, I talk to so and so, and they what do they do? They do this positive. What did I uh, positive things in my life, and this and that? I said, yeah, I did that so many times, and this is what we're supposed to do. And I gone through like the day I remember. I don't know teenagers till today. I gone through all those things. I said, I must be drunk when I sign up this contract, <laughs> or somebody tricked me. 
like, what did I do? <laughs> For sure. But it's good, good, good news. <laughs> we are changing. I hope it's this lifetime. I don't want to come back to the new paradigm. So, <laughs> Okay, absolutely. Yes, I know. We um, The old paradigm is um, intense. Let, let me put it um, very lightly that it is... It has been intense because we the old paradigm is about duality, meaning that it's light and dark, good and bad. So you will never experience, you know, everything is perfect. There will always be good and there will always be bad. That that's duality. Duality. <laughs> that's the para, That's the old paradigm that we 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 managed to survive through. As the the paradigm where we are, um, we feel separated. The only way we can play this game of uh, light and dark is if we are separated, meaning that we, we, well, there are many levels of separation. We first we are separated from ourselves. We don't remember who we are. We are separated from our soul. We are separated from the higher aspects of ourselves. So that's one level of separation. And then we are separated from each other. Like we always think of the other person as, no, that's not me. So, you know, um, and and we are conditioned to look after ourselves first because that is preservation, self-preservation, because as long as you are alive, you can play this game and we come here to play this game so that's why um staying alive is we would do a crazy things the craziest of things in order to stay alive so we have actually um you know women used to be that we 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 couldn't even there's no way that we can make a living the only way we, we can make a living is to marry somebody. Um, so, so yeah, there are, these are all crazy rigged games. So there, so there are so many things that this, this, um, this game afford us, which if we don't, which if we remember who we are, which is lim unlimited beings of, um, and eternal beings. We know we can't die. So what do you mean? What do you mean I need to do this to stay alive? I've always been alive. I've never died before. So like, if we remember that, we couldn't have these experiences. So that's why like, like the, the game is duality. And there has been so many things to keep us in this game so many things is done to keep us in this game we we die we actually get to die um in order to to because we used to the body actually um this this body anyways this 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 body is supposed to be able to um live easily till a thousand years if you if you actually look into the bible <clears throat> people used to live to you know a few hundred years old um like five six seven hundred years old but nowadays you know if you live past a hundred it's rare like not not impossible but well, it's a big celebration if you live 100 <laughs> yeah. and the people say oh no i don't want to be 100 because i don't want to be on a bed <laughs> So, actually, so, um, so we live life, the limited life span is actually to make sure that we don't um, see too much, that we don't um, learn too much. Because if we are smart enough and we live long enough, we may be able to see through these games. So that's why our lifespan has been just cut short from at least a thousand to a yes. hundred. So it's like that's 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 how they we were able to um to keep ourselves to be immersed in this game and thinking that this is all real. I mean, I mean, if I 
if you know this person um, do this, then I will die. So that's actually how you know, we can actually experience death is having a body that is that seems to be so vulnerable. It's like something as as minute as a virus can actually kill us. Which, if you think of it, you know, how big is a, a virus? We can't even see a virus with our naked eyes. We actually have to use special equipment in order to, to see the, the, vi the virus. So something so small can kill something, one of us, that is eternal um, and limitless beings. That is, that is quite the experience. So mm -hmm. we came here for that experience, the summer some of us did anyway, so. May I say something? Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so what about the social contracts that, you know, I think uh, <laughs> Franco used to tell us that we come with a social, uh, what do you, soul contracts, like, so we, that is the reason why we keep coming back to have the different experiences. And we are not allowed to have the same experience again. So Nishi, at least be glad that this is the only experience you'll have. <laughs> you may not have the same experience next time. <laughs> um, okay. So you're saying that 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 will change in the new five G? Yes, absolutely. So there, there won't be any soul contracts. Like, um, I wouldn't say that there will be no soul contracts, but it's going to be a very different kind of contract. Because in the new game, um, the game, the new game, there is oneness. We start to remember who we truly are. We start to get reconnected with our uh, limitless self. Um, not completely, but we, um, not all the time, not completely, but we actually get glimpse of this. We have more access to the the limitless part of us. We have more access to that. So the way we play would be very different. We won't be able to um, have the light, dark experience that we currently can enjoy. We can enjoy um, a, a, a war with other people where it's legal for us to go out and kill somebody else. So that actually is what war is is we make it, it's a game where, you know, it's legal to go kill somebody because that person is from the enemy, is disconnected from us. But in the new game, we remember that we are one. So in oneness, <laughs> it means that when I go out and kill somebody, I'm actually killing myself. You know, if, if you really think about that, why would yeah. you want to do this? You know, how much hatred do you have for yourself in order for you to do that, to kill yourself? So it will definitely affect how we play the game. Yeah. Uh, another thing I was thinking. I think it's already starting. Yeah, there are lots of little, little groups that are being kind and thoughtful. <laughs> And doing things for other people, like yeah, uh, and doing like exchanges, like you, know, you do something, I do something. Uh -huh. they of course, like, we are we are in the transition period now, so yeah, we start to see more and more of that. Until you know, uh, roughly, like when when the people will like, is there any percentage? Like so many people who has to be this side to become a light. <laughs> we were away from a duality or anybody who's going through that with their stepping to 5d instead of a 3d so they are all individuals they, they they're just going and they will be there like so it's will be this way and that way is that okay. that's how it's going to be in the same earth plan or or uh, it's will be totally everything will be different like how people say that uh, they have on earth so it will be heaven on earth while we are in this lifetime or we have to come back to see that uh, heaven on earth next there lifetime. is no heaven or earth <laughs> there is no heaven or earth that is the wrong thing okay according to cornelius 
He says it will take 232,648 people to tilt the world, to tilt the balance. Um, I understand it a little differently. Yeah. So yeah. in the in the new paradigm, um, in the oh okay. So let me contrast it with the the old paradigm. In the old paradigm, because we were playing in duality. So, um, if I don't like to kill other people, but <clears throat> um, other people still needs to have to have that experience then that will still be happening whether i like it or not that's the old paradigm whether i like it or not no, because we happened. are playing in light dark but in the new paradigm if i don't want to experience something and i truly am congruent meaning my mind body and spirit i am absolutely sure I do not want that experience, then it does not matter whether someone else want that experience. They can have that experience. I, well, they can have that experience. They just, just that they won't be experiencing it when they are around me. So I won't be able to witness that happening if I truly do not want to have that experience. So that is the power that we have. In the we'll new come into your awareness. We we can actually really <coughs> a lot more control of our own experience. Well, we we are still doing that. Like we are trying to close off the bad things. Like yeah, uh, this uh, night and day. It could be possibly because of the planet movements. Yeah, where we are getting darkness and then we have light. So maybe that started from there. I'm thinking, you know, the duality, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So people consider it like in darkness, you can do a lot of bad things. And in the daytime, it's more open. But then we learn to do everything everywhere. <laughs> um, that's, it's possible, yes. <clears throat> But it's, it's actually not about light or dark. It's about how we feel when we are in the light, how we feel when we are in the dark. Exactly, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. It it developed from there. like uh, Because my religion, Zoroastrianism, it is based that we are born with equal light uh, and dark or good and bad. And it is up to us to choose which path we are going. That is how... Our religion teaches that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's up to us to keep whichever balance you like, more good, more bad, whatever. Yeah. What do you pay attention to? Yeah. We, so we're we already grow, stopping that. Yeah. We're stopping to pay grow not what we are to paying side. attention to. That's yeah. why one of the ways that you can empower yourself is actually to get to neutral. Right. Right. When you get to neutral, when you no longer play the you know good bad um, light dark game, when you get to neutral, when you can see that okay, what other people think of as bad, you don't have that. You you don't mind that. You are new when you are completely neutral. Then you're free to choose anything. Thank you. Need to choose that. And also energetically, energetically, the energy is actually supporting us to get to the point where we actually are able to let go much easier. In the old energy, it's so hard to let go of anything because we have <coughs> all these thoughts in our minds that keep pulling us back. Whereas mm -hmm. in the, the new um, paradigm, the energy is so strong. So it's actually much easier to let go if we want to let go. So that, that is like, so when we choose to let go, when we actually want to let go, then it's 
very easy to let go. And then you were talking about life and death. So like there, there shouldn't be any death because if we are taking care of our bodies and we can heal ourselves, uh, which we have the power to, then there's no need to die. Yeah. And there are, the, in Hindus, uh, Hinduism, I think that there is like people live 5,000 years. Yeah. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. Our body actually is a, is a piece of technology that um, how the body functions in a band of energy it's our body would be able to function one way naturally. But when that band of energy is being moved up, when we get to be higher energy, it actually unlocks different part of our different abilities of our body to be able to heal ourselves much more naturally. Yeah. And when now the body can heal itself, um, then, you know, we can actually stay alive much longer. Now, whether we can actually stay alive forever, that really depends on um, a lot of things. It depends on um, our consciousness. If we can get to the part where we can let go, we are able to get to neutral, then absolutely, we can. the body can live indefinitely. However, there are there may there may be um, wherever it is that you still have attachment. The reason why we die is because the soul wants to have new experiences. But when your consciousness has certain attachments, it does not allow your soul to move mm. as easily. And the only way that it, the the soul can um, make us move is to die is yeah. to let go of the body so it really depends on the consciousness if you get to the consciousness where you can let go and be neutral and um, don't get triggered easily and even when you get triggered you're able to let go then yes your body would be able to move through any kind of changes and be able to respond according to what you so actually want and in that instances, then the body don't have to die anymore. Your body mm -hmm. will simply shift and be able to upgrade and upgrade according to your consciousness to a point where the body can actually be um, more etheric, meaning that you don't actually need a body. You will no. create a body whenever you need to be seen or whenever you need the body to do something. And at the other times, you don't need the body. So the, the body density changes. Change. Yeah. The density yeah. changes, like you said. Yeah. Always. The, body, the body is able to do that. It's capable to do that. But um, these abilities is only unlocked according to your consciousness. True. <clears throat> so fascinating times I know Absolutely. I was asking my upstairs tenant this afternoon I, and I came and he was talking and he says uh, what does it matter like uh, the my next door house is being for sale so always my wheel trans drivers they ask you know oh, there's a house for sale you know how much I said I don't know so today I said I have time I go and check and the, the lady came and showed me it's about almost a two million and uh, so I told the guy, uh, and he said, I don't care how much it costs. I'm happy you're this and that, unless I die. <laughs> so I said, uh, maybe we'll both die. I said, no, if you die, you'll give me more problems because then I have to deal with new people. So I said, please don't <laughs> die. He said, maybe we both die together. I said, no, I'm not ready to die. <laughs> too much fun coming along. I want to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> see that's that's when your body wants to keep on living it's when you're actually having fun yeah. 
Were you not having fun? The meaning, <laughs> curiosity of what is coming, even though I don't understand it all, mm -hmm. I want to see what is going to happen. Yep. And that's, that's how I let all this pass, you know, all the ugliness. I just let it pass. I said, it'll yeah. change, it'll change. <laughs> yes. So, um, mm -hmm. nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Not even the games we we are playing. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments, questions? No, I'm taking a printout tomorrow. What the, the game I'm going to play moving tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing the whole game. I'm tired of this game. <laughs> Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so how do we change the game? <laughs> That's what I want. So I will yeah. have the problem. How do we change the game is we actually accept the game. Uh, accept the games that we are here to play. So acceptance does not mean that you have to agree to it. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree it. Acceptance simply means you agree that that is what, what has happened. So you allow it to be, meaning, acceptance meaning that you acknowledge what is. When you acknowledge what is, then, then um, you actually find out where you are in the, in the game when you accept what is. Because as long as you're resisting, as long as you don't like it, you resist, <laughs> you actually, um, it's, it is actually physics. Every time you hit the wall, you don't just hit the wall. The wall hits you back because you can feel that resistance back at you to hurt you. So the way to change the game is to not resist, meaning that you just come into neutral. Yes, this is what happened. I cannot change the past. I can only be in this moment and make different choices so that the future can be different. So accepting me is just meaning that you acknowledge that this is what happened. No need to resist, no need to blame. Just process all that, let all of that go. Just know that, okay, this happened, this is where I am now. And when you are in this moment with yourself, then you can actually start to make different choices the next time you play. So um, I'm going to give you an example of what do I mean by that. Sure. So this is, um, <clears throat> you guys know that uh, <laughs> I have a great relationship with my mom, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You guys have heard all about that. You I, have sa I have same relations with my son, so don't worry about it. So I actually um, have come to the point where my relationship with my mom is totally different because I have come to accept her for who she is and I have accept um, my own, I would say, duplicity in the way our relationship is because she's not a monster. She's not evil. Nothing like that. She, she is who she is. And I am who I am. It's just that, you know, I, I, my expectation of a mother is very different from the mother that I got. So I have so much resistance. Um, that's why I have so much resistance. But I work at this relationship. And this relationship has taught me so much. <clears throat> I've gotten to the point where um, I absolutely accept my mom for who she is. And I really appreciate that. You know, from her, the story that she has, from how she was raised, um, her experience, all that, it actually, that is, that molded who she is. That absolutely molded who she is. So <coughs> I accept that. 
know, once I accepted that, my relationship with her is different now. So I let go of my expectation of her and I changed myself. And when when you change yourself, when you don't try to change someone else, when you actually do the work to change yourself, to really let go of the expectations, let go of you know my own insecurity, because I want a mother that actually supports me. That when I can, when I, you know, I, I like energy, I actually want a mother or expect a mother, my mother to um, support me in, when I see, I, I see energy. But nothing in her experience is going to give her that background to be that person. And so when I ex when I accept her as who she is and I don't need any um, support from her anymore. When I stop doing that, when I change my own, when I work with my own insecurity and get to the point where she can say whatever she wants, she can yell, she can scream, she can you know, contradict me, but it does not face me at all because um, when I get to the point where I'm, I'm so secure in myself in what it is that I want to experience that she can be who she is and it does not um, bring me down anymore. I don't have to, you know, have, <clears throat> I don't have to have a, um, something sweet when I come back home. I don't need to have, you know, um, rest to, to get over my visit with my mom. I don't need to do that anymore because I don't expect anything from her. I just accept her as who she is. And when I do that, our relationship changed. She is now so sweet to me. <laughs> it's, it's. Wow. She is sweet. So just through accepting. Yeah. And. Um, and do and do my own um, inner work as well to so work on my own insecurity, work on all that. When I when I don't need her to support me emotionally, when I actually give myself emotional support, when I do that, then I free her up to be who she is, mm -hmm. and that's when our relationship actually changed. And now when I say my relationship with my mom, I say it with a smirk because it's it's very different now. We have a completely different relationship. It's like I had a completely different mom now. Congratulations. So, wow. It's meaning it's, you could also be formed partly by what your mother went through. It it does come back down to us too. Like just like what you went through, you will pass on to your children too. Yeah. There is that, that degree. So I, I cleaned up my history so right. that now they are free to choose their history. Okay. Okay, so that's, how do you do that? Um, what do you mean, how, how do I do what? So you no longer say that story, like that I'm so-and-so's daughter and all the things that happen that's what you stop like yeah yeah i i actually get to the part where um even if she says something to me i i know it's not true i know she is just interpreting the world because i know she is playing her game as well i'm playing my game and she has her game and so yeah. <clears throat> when i shift the way i um, play with her. It's it's just shifted the then the uh, dynamics. Yeah, yeah. So so actually, when I first start to shift that, um, she actually came back <laughs> with new strategies to get me back in the game, uh, <laughs> and then I yeah. have shifted even more in order uh, to get to the point where I I'm like. She can play whatever game she wants, and I'm okay. <laughs> so, yes, there is this dance. There is this dance that we do in relationship. It's a, it's a dance. So, 
and and the the only thing he can do is to work with what's inside here. When you work with what's inside here, then everyone else would have to. They have to shift because they want they um especially <laughs> if if that that other person is my mother. It's like you know she will always be my mother. <laughs> yeah. So when I change, they have to change. They don't have a choice. They have to come up with a new way to be with me. Because the old games does not get the reaction <laughs> that they are looking for anymore. It's also expectations. Like when the thing that triggers us, I think, is because we expect something from some people. And when that expectation <laughs> is not met, we get triggered. Yeah, and that, that is my <laughs> problem. <laughs> like it takes me a whole day to come back down, like, uh, come back and you know say, no, it was a game played by both of us. Like it's not just one person's fault. Yep, we are we are in this game Thank together. Always play, play the game. <laughs> yep, and, and when you can get to the point where you, you know, yes, you get triggered, and you know, so so I've gone through that too. Like when I get triggered, I would say <laughs> all these thoughts in my head. And then I would just say to myself, huh, how funny. This is a game and you choose to get triggered. So when I actually realize that I have a choice in this, I'm not locked in, then um, what do I choose? Do I choose to stay angry or not? So when you get to the point where you can actually let go, then the game no longer has you. I mean, it's it's not as much fun as <laughs> as the 3D game. It's, it's a totally different level of game. So, <laughs> so oops. I answer the phone. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so... um. So we are going. We are talking about how to how to get out of the game. Um, yeah, you print out <laughs> how to get out of the game is you um, realize that it's it's a game. So acceptance, one of it, really acceptance. Acceptance does not mean you have to agree. Does not mean you have to you know turn the other cheek and let them slap you the other way? No. It just means that you accept that, you know, somebody slapped you. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do? <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. It is what is. Acceptance simply means it is you accept what is, what has happened. You accept it. And then, and so acceptance. And then the, the, the other thing is you, you have to really remember really keep reminding yourself this is a game it is just a game it's not real because there is no the reality is false anyway so um i remember <clears throat> before franco used to to say that you know the uh, you give the other person the script what to say to you to trigger you and I always, when I first thought, when I first heard him saying that, I was yeah. like, what kind of crazy thing I to did. say? That's just not possible. How can I give the script to someone else? Yes, I can. Totally can. Because it's a game. And I, not, not, um, <clears throat> not with words, but unconsciously, I actually send the signal to the other person to let them know what it is that he can possibly say to trigger me in the most spectacular way. So when you really realize that, yeah, it's a game and we send signal to each other to how to make this game even more interesting. We do that unconsciously of course but we do that because this is a game and when you can actually realize and be conscious that this is a game no matter what's happening inside and um, what what's whatever it is that's happening outside it's a game 
absolutely is a game. And when you really process that, that everything you see is not real, it's a game. It's just a game. Then <clears throat> you start to wake yourself up and let yourself know that um, when you wake yourself up, you're not immersed in it. You're not, the game does not have you. You, you start to be able to have a part of you, maybe not completely at first, but a part of you would be able to observe yourself. How do you play this game? How do you <clears throat> do certain things to get triggered? So you, you know, you observe how you actually make this, create this game, this reality that you're experiencing. And when you start to observe yourself, how do you play in order to create all the drama for yourself? When you observe that, then you can start to <clears throat> change the way how you respond, <clears throat> what, what, um, you can start to make different choices. And when you make different choices, you change the game. It's, it's, you're no longer, the, the game does not have you. You have the game. So you reverse the role. You're no longer a victim of the game. You start to be the creator of the game. And that's what we're here to do, is to remember that we are much bigger than the game. And that when we remember that this is a game, then we can play the game differently. And um, this game is has been designed by genius, like evil genius, but genius nonetheless. <clears throat> so when you remember that this is a game, and if you don't like the result, then you know let go of the anger let go of the frustration and start to um, observe how how did you create this game for yourself and once you observe how you react how you become um, a part of this game how, or being a victim of the game once you observe and realize what it is that you do and you then you start to be able to make different choices. And that's when you can get out of the game. Whatever game you want, you can get out of. <laughs> Winnie, yeah. what role has the soul in this game? Or the game, is it played by the our consciousness or together by, by the soul and the consciousness? Is this, is this the game between our soul and the consciousness? Um, <clears throat> so when we say soul, it's very imprecise. Um, there are different levels of the soul. But mostly the soul is the energetic part of us. The energetic part of us is actually arranging everything for us. So let's say if I'm here to um, experience this relationship with my mother, then my soul would energetically, you know, would, would be able to send out the energetic signals to my mom and give her the script to say things that is going to create the relationship that we have. So that's a part of the soul. But it's not the part of the, the, the highest soul. It's, 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 um, it's, it's that. So the, the soul, when we, we use the soul, um, that's what we are saying is that we, the soul is just an energetic part of us. But then there is also the other parts of our soul, which is the higher consciousness. Yeah. So um, as we go into this new paradigm, the higher consciousness of us will be able to um, really 
guide us into, okay, if you do this, like the, so you would start to hear that, that good conversation. Yes, you can do this. If you do this, then X, Y, Z is going to happen. If you don't do this, then, you know, um, ABC is going to happen. So you choose. Uh -huh. So that that uh, so, in the new paradigm, we have better connection with a higher part of us, which is outside of the game. So it can uh -huh. actually see the game much better, and would be able to guide us to <clears throat> have the experiences that actually would be able to. Um, allow our soul to learn more about ourselves because this is all the the reason why we come here to have experiences is actually we want to learn a soul wants to learn how it is to have a loving relationship with someone how it is to have a a um a not so loving relationship with someone the soul wants to learn these things what does it feel like to actually physically embody that experience. That's why we're here to learn. And in the new paradigm, like, like, do we still have to go through things that we, we didn't get to experience this time? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on the higher, um, like the higher part of our soul. If, this, if the higher consciousness can see that, oh, it will still be useful. For you to have the experience then you will still be able to you will still need to create that experience for yourself to ex to to grow in order to grow and if the higher part of us um think that oh, okay well you know what you don't need this for now you may want to circle back another lifetime totally different setup um in order to um have this experience so that's that's why <clears throat> we think of fifth dimension as heaven on earth. It's because we have so much more access that, and um, so we're actually playing a completely different game. Mm. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, just the. Um... Um, I, I feel like an urge to of, of connection to connect the soul with the consciousness, universal conscious. Does that mean that I'm disconnected? That's what I feel. I feel something like my soul has to connect. <laughs> it, it is, yeah. So who who wants that? Mm -hmm. That um, connection. The mind. Um, hmm. We are always connected. The the answer is we are always connected. Um, mm -hmm. It's a story that we create in our mind that we are not connected because you expect when you're connected that you expect certain things. Mm -hmm. and when you don't get that, you think that it's because you're not connected. But you're always connected. It is just what is, um, there must be some other belief that is giving you this experience of feeling like you're not connected. So mm -hmm. kind of have a conversation with yourself to, to, to figure out, you know, why would you want to have that? Why would you want to have this experience of, not connected mm -hmm. so, yeah okay thank you okay you're welcome so any other questions you all know how to get out of this game now <clears throat> Graduated? <laughs> you all... Uh... No, I'm in a kindergarten, so don't worry. <laughs> I will ask you 10 times other things, but... 
We just got a blueprint of it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know what? Um, just acceptance. First thing, acceptance. Yeah. And uh, remember that it's a game. And also, um, really, I would say, remember, everyone else is also you. Remember that there's no, no one outside of you. Everyone else is simply another version of you. And so if you have, if you have something, uh, if there is an issue or something, then that issue is within yourself. And you just have to do the inner work. Just like I have to work on my own insecurities to shift that relationship. I can't just say, I don't want that anymore and, and, and wish it away. I have to do the inner work. So do the inner work. Why do you think that relationship is the way it is? What um, What is the... the what do you need within yourself in order to shift that? What do you need to shift within yourself? And when you work on that and shift yourself, then the other person will have to shift. They don't have a choice. That is, that is energy. When you shift, they will have to shift. How they shift, we don't know. That they will have to how about if you how about if you just disconnect with people just say simply that's it done with this done with that and then just be myself that's it and you don't have to work that hard uh, okay well good luck with that game <laughs> good luck with that <laughs> we are we are here to be with other people we like, like the uh, other time we, we were walking and you said, your sister is not a, your real sister or anything. It's just the game we are playing and we are here now. So when I'm, when I'm saying, okay, it's, we are here as a puppet, we are playing the game mm -hmm. and somebody else is running and giving us the, they already gave us the agenda saying you have to do this, this, yep, but we yep, came yep, here. Say this. <laughs> Yeah, we you have to see this, but we gone off track, added more stuff because we forgot, especially me, I forgot what I supposed to do. And I collected more dust on that agenda. I can't even read. <laughs> so now I have I have, I'm in the kindergarten today and saying, okay, what really I have to do and what why I came here, what kind of experience or what kind of game I supposed to play. So I just wanted to know how I get that information. Except forgiving everybody, disconnecting, deleting the contracts, forgiving everybody, or disconnecting with everybody. Okay. So there is a game called I Need to Be in Control Game. Oh. See? <laughs> There is a game called I Need to Be in Control <laughs> Game. So Perfect. that's one of the games that we play as well. Why mm -hmm. do we play that game? It's because we are insecure. Like you may not believe that you're insecure, but when if you are trying to control, if you then like if you want to be, if you want to remember, I want to remember so that we're what I'm supposed to do. So that means you're trying to be a good girl. Mm -hmm. that then means... no, no experience, right? So then the opposite is always true as well. That means you believe somehow that you're not good enough. That's why you try to be good. Mm -hmm. So remember that those games, those, those games. If so you can, like to... Can we... Can we still be like disconnected from the family and still play the game? No. <laughs> um, the, no, uh, you know what? You have the game. That I means have. wherever you go, mm -hmm. as long as there are people around, you would create that game. The game is within you. So if they are not your family, they would be other people that you meet. 
so, so you would recreate this game with your family, with what, whomever it is that's, that's, um, that you come across. You would try to recreate that game because you are the game. You, you are the gamer. So wherever you go, you create that game. All right, I'll play wisely. So, <laughs> <laughs> not to get caught and don't burn my battery. That's it. <laughs> your your family is just you know the the, the it's just the, the first it's like the seed money the first chip chips for you to play with because mm -hmm. you are the game you are the gamer so you know you play the, your family is the first set of people that you play the game with. If you if you somehow you know you don't like your family, you go and play with another group. Believe it or not, you would come across the same people who play the game with you because you are the game. <laughs> it, like if it's not your family, it will be someone else. So you can you can cut your family off, but. As long as you don't live by yourself on an island, as long as there's <laughs> someone else around, you will play the game. It is your game. So, <clears throat> all right, I'm changing anyway, so I'm going to change now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you so change Gail, from within, not outside, right? Yeah, it's you it's, have to change from within, not just yeah, outside. Because you, you bring the game. Wherever you go, you bring the game. So if I didn't resolve the issue with my mom, I would recreate it with everyone <laughs> else that I come along that has the, like, maybe not everybody, but anyone that is <clears throat> um, kind of like my mom. So that means we we from that is embedded with us because we promised up there this is the experience I'm gonna go through. Yeah. Upstairs, downstairs. So so that's how you know that you know this is your game. That's yes. that's my game. Okay. That is Jeez, your game. I, I told you it must be on something when I signed up this game, okay? <laughs> So, so what do you do? So, <clears throat> so you kind of find out what what game you really playing. So the the there are there are only a limited number of games. So I am not worthy game. So if you're the I am not worthy game, then there are usually two ways you can play it. Either you um, get to the point where you deny yourself everything. You 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 give everything away because you you're not worthy. The or the other the opposite. It's always true as well. Or you try to surround yourself with so many things, like material things, to to kind of convince yourself that you're worth that you're worthy. So the opposite is always true. So the I'm not worthy game, that's that's a nice game. And then the I'm not good enough game. So the I'm not good enough game is one way to play it is you would do everything 110% to prove that you're good enough. That's one way to pay, play the game. And the opposite is always true. You, you become a slacker because you think, well, I'm not good enough, so why try? So mm -hmm. that's, so when you, so you have to, to kind of understand What's the reason behind the games you play? Is it because you're not worthy? Because you're not good enough? Or the, that's a good one is I don't belong. Because I like I have that one. I always feel I don't belong because, you know, my mom is different from me. I don't belong in the family because I'm like the black sheep of the family. No one in my family thinks like me. So the I play the I don't belong game very well. And I... <laughs> so the I don't belong game, then the, there's usually two extremes that you can play the game. Either you do everything backwards, bend yourself um, backwards to try to 
be nice to other people so that they will accept you. You try to belong. Or the other thing is you don't care about other people. So you try to look cool so that, you know, you don't belong. So you cut yourself off first. So that's one one or the two, the other two extreme. That's how you play the I don't belong game. And then there is the I am not safe game. The I am not safe game is you would always try to be safe. You always make sure that, you know, you have, <clears throat> let's say um, your, your house has at least five, six locks on so that you feel safe. You always make sure the windows are closed. There are bars on the, the windows. So you do everything um, 110% to make sure to create the safe environment environment for yourself. Or the opposite way is to you go ahead and just take crazy risk because it's not safe. So, you know, no matter what I do, it's not going to be safe. So I must well, might as well have fun. So depending on um, whether you are the, the <coughs> extrovert or the extrovert. Extroverts usually would go all out. Whereas if you're the introvert, you would try to play it safe and make sure everything is safe. So um, what else? Um, oh, I am powerless game as well. You feel, I, yeah, I, I, I'm just one person. I can't change the world. I'm just one person. I cannot go against the government. So I cannot go against the teacher. I cannot go against the doctor. So I have no power. I have to listen to everyone else. So that's the I am powerless game. So what, what game are you playing? When you understand the game that you are playing, then you work on the reason why you play that game. So if you're powerless, then you need to remember how powerful you truly are. It's because at some point, you um, agree to take on this I am powerless game in order to, like for the, the powerful eternal being, how fun it is to experience powerless. So then you get to remember, really allow yourself to physically remember and reconnect with who you truly are as eternal powerful being and start to take one step at a time to empower yourself. So the antidote depends on which game you're playing. Better? You have, you have more um, <clears throat> or more ammunition to play to, to get yourself out? No, I think two, three things, like a little bit here, a little bit here. It's a mixture of everything. So I cannot really detect um, only this. Oh, you you don't always just play one game. That's not funny enough. You always play several <laughs> games. <laughs> so you have to work on several things. So you have to work on the, okay, if you have the, so so let so, so for me I have to I don't belong so I have to <clears throat> really work on the belonging things the the belonging and then I'm the not good <coughs> that's why I do everything one hundred and ten percent so that I am have to convince myself that I'm good enough I'm that's why I'm always taking courses I'm always taking workshops. Because I want to be good enough. So I have to really get to the point where I allow myself to feel the what is what good enough is. So when I really embody the that I am good enough as I am, flawed and all, what's and all. So when you get to the point where you understand the game and then you give yourself you embody the the one thing that is keeping the game going when you embody that you feel you really feel that you, you can't 
you can't cheat energy. You have to actually believe that you are good enough. You have to actually convince yourself that you belong. So mm -hmm. what do you do? You, you, you do the things to prove to yourself that you are good enough. Very good. What, what about um, the physical part? Like you playing the game of a person who is in pain or not feeling well? Is that a game too? So your body is um, supporting you to play the game of I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. So the body is you, then you have to start to <clears throat> um, look at the body. So your body is supporting you to play the game that you wanted to play. So what is the game that you actually wanted to play? Is it you are not safe or you're not able to, or that you are powerless or you're not good enough or you're not worthy? So which game? You have to ask yourself, my body is the way it is. How, what does it make you feel? Powerless. Okay, then it's the power game mm -hmm. that you're playing. That's the underlying reason why your body is showing up the way it is. So you work on empowering yourself. So I, I remember I, I mentioned to you is the you use your imagination because <clears throat> your body does not know whether something is real or not. Remember, there's no real, there's no, right. no reality. So you actually create the reality. So give yourself a time each day, maybe just a short time, to really mm -hmm. feel what a healthy body feels like. Just, just mm -hmm. imagine. I know you may not be able to feel that way, but just imagine what it would feel like if you can feel it, what it would feel like. Just, just so you are showing your unconscious mind, this is what you want. I want health. So when right. you start to do that, then your unconscious mind will start to work. And then you do other things like you really research on how do you support your body? So the, um, uh, there are like, there are two videos that I sent out last week that actually talks yes. about um, like how the, the magnesium and also copper, what they actually does to your body. And if you, if you go and search the website, um, the doctor that was talking with um, Jason, is Dr. Molly Robbins, I think the last name is. So he has a website. And on his website, there's actually um, PDF protocols that you can download that will start to teach you how to um, treat your body. So go, like, if you like what you see um, in, uh, on the video, if, if, you, if it resonates with you, then you go and research more of that and start to take, you know, try one or two of their things that they recommend and see how your body respond. So you work with your body. Right. Step yeah. by step. So you use your mind to let your body know what it is that you actually want. And then you empower your body. You give your body the right nutrients treat the body the right way then it will you actually give your body the raw materials to start to rebuild itself so that is how i would work with a body that is not functioning well okay thank you okay yeah, yeah I'm, I'm waiting for my blood work result because I, after that, uh, watching that, so I went to my doctor. I said, I want to check my magnesium. <laughs> so <laughs> I will get the report soon. 
you're an A student. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, already, I, I already know that you're an A student. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to so you know that so you have to what is your game do you feel you're not good enough <laughs> I see you okay <laughs> so that is your game <laughs> that's my game okay. that's, why, that's why you you're an A student you do everything 110% oh, no few things I do 110% few things okay. <laughs> ask, ask my family they fail me in every every game no 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 <laughs> yeah okay great okay wow <laughs> okay so i think enough questions um we 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 didn't do I think last time we didn't, there were so many things to talk about. We didn't get to do a meditation. I actually want to do a short meditation. I know it's it's like only eight minutes left, but it may take about 15 minutes. Is that okay? Or mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do it. So if you need to go, then you need to go. However, that's my intention is the next 15 minutes is mm -hmm. to actually um, one this, this one um, meditation is, is something that I learned recently to do, is to really get so deep into yourself that you forget that you have these stories. So that is, that is the meditation. So 